Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to this Wednesday afternoon edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. We have a lot of news to get to this afternoon, so let's get started. First up, we begin with Coronavirus New Hampshire key information and data. Let's take a look at that information right now. And here is a look at that information for all of you right now. There are 12,919 number of people in New Hampshire have tested positive for COVID-19. 10,230,770 number of people in the United States have tested positive. 489 number of deaths from COVID-19 in New Hampshire. 796 number of people have been hospitalized with COVID-19 in New Hampshire. And two 39, 521 number of deaths from COVID-19 in the United States. Let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire where current cases of COVID-19 are. Manchester, 157. Let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire where total cases of COVID-19 are. Manchester, 2565. And now let's take a look at these three charts here. Let's start with the first chart here. New cases each day in New Hampshire in the purple. Daily new positive COVID-19 cases in the orange. New hospitalization and in the red deaths. Let's take a look at this chart here. Current cases in the purple. Total current COVID-19 cases and in the orange. Current hospitalization. And let's take a look at this chart here. Total cases in the purple. Total positive COVID-19 cases in the orange. Total hospitalization. Red deaths and blue recovered. Let's take a look at this chart here, positive PCR test rate and daily PCR test. Let's take a look at this chart here, age group of cases, female and male of cases, and risk information. Let's take a look at this chart here, infections, hospitalizations, and deaths. And let's take a look at this chart here, deaths percent of New Hampshire population, race slash ethnicity of cases, and hospitalizations. And a reminder, your common symptoms, fever, lack of smell, cough, chills, difficult breathing, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. How it spreads, and prevention tips. And be sure to stay with the Riley King Network for the latest of your COVID-19 information. Veterans Day still marked in Nashua, despite pandemic restrictions, no parade, but day remains one for reflection. Let's take a listen to that video from WME War News 9, Ray Brewer. season is taking off at Beltate's Building Supply. From building materials to tools, paints, and everything else you need, we'll make fall home improvements a breeze. Shop online at Beltates.com, visit one of our nine locations, or place your order via phone or email. As bells chimed, the first of several Veterans Day remembrances got underway in the Gate City. It's a special day for me. But different this year, as the pandemic has curtailed many of the normal events. Without the visual symbols, it, it's kind of almost another day. But it is not. While the day originally marked the end of World War I, now it is a day to honor all who served in the armed forces. For Richard Mormon, it was in the Pacific in World War II. He wishes today people would pause and reflect. Thinking about the veterans and thank them for their service and the memory, remembering the ones that never made it home. For some veterans, today is bittersweet as they recall what the days were like when they returned from fighting in Vietnam. We couldn't even wear our uniform when we got home. Those people didn't honor the veterans. I think they honor the veterans more today than they did then. And so they gathered around the various monuments in the Gate City to honor service to our nation. We come out, uh, rain or shine, uh, snow, it doesn't matter. Well, we, we, do our, we pay our respects. Without a parade, one woman said it just didn't feel like Veterans Day. But for those who served, as one vet put it, every day is Veterans Day. In Nashua, Ray Brewer, WMUR News Not. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report.
rural New Hampshire communities now experiencing some of the most widespread COVID-19 transmission. Health officials urge vigilance. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Amy Cavino. Fall home improvement season is taking off at Bill Tate's Building Supply. From building materials to tools, paints, and everything else you need, we'll make fall home improvements a breeze. Shop online at belltates.com, visit one of our nine locations, or place your order via phone or email. All of these um, metrics, all of these facts uh, point to um, the, the fact that we're losing control on preventing the spread of this virus. Health officials say now is not the time to drop your guard. We're concerned that many people have stopped taking this, uh, the threat from this virus seriously. Based on population, COVID-19 is spreading rapidly in rural communities. Clarksville is the hardest hit town in the state right now, with one active case for every 27 people. Brookfield in Carroll County has one case for every 58 people, and Stewartstown has one case for every 78 of its residents. Warner in Merrimack County has one case per 93 residents, and Colebrook has confirmed cases in one out of every 100 people. This has really opened up our eyes that it's, it's everywhere, and we're not immune to it. Colebrook set up a surge site early into the crisis. It was just taken down in June. But Neely says they can have it back up and running in a moment's notice. I think uh, as a town and as a community, we're really ready ready to go if, if things get more serious than, than they are. Uh, we've we spent a lot of time preparing for this. Dr. Chan is aware that complacency and fatigue are setting in, but urges vigilance. If people don't take this virus seriously, community transmission spread is only going to increase risk to um, our families and our communities is only going to increase. And we're going to lose the flexibility and the freedom that um, our communities have enjoyed over the summer. Now for some encouraging news. Dr. Chan says a limited first supply of a vaccine could be here in the state by the end of the year. It would be distributed first to high-risk populations, long-term care facilities, frontline health workers, and the like. Reporting live this evening, Amy Cavino, WMUR News. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that's the report this afternoon edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon, and I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. I'll have a Jamesy Park coming up in a little bit. Goodbye, everyone.